welcome you here to the Arabian Sports Talk here on 91.7 WEEM. We're bringing you the first episode of the school year, but I'm Dawson Peril. I'm Jackson Todd. I'm Raiden Falk. I'm Aiden Wilson. And for today, we're going to be looking over to the NFL side of things. Uh, more specifically, of course, you got a couple new uh, news articles to look at. Starting off, of course, running back Dalvin Cook was signed to the New York Jets. That really just came in. I think it was last night that it first hit uh, late last night. And of course, today was when it got really stirred up. So. Of course, Dalvin Cook, Pro Bowl running back, uh, played for the Vikings since he was drafted, got released earlier in the offseason. There was definitely a lot of talk around New York. There was some talk around uh, Miami Dolphins, uh, but I think definitely decided uh, decide on New York. That was a good option. Of course, Aaron Rodgers was a new addition over there, so they're going to be looking very, very different on offense, and I definitely say in a good way, of course, Aaron Rodgers uh, cemented himself as one of the better quarterbacks of all time, and then uh, with the uh, with the young stars of Dalvin Cook and Garrett Wilson, they are with them as weapons, as well as Brees Hall. I mean, you can't forget about him. He's still going to be a crucial part of that offense. I think this Jets offense, we already know the defense is really good, but with now this offense really looking like a top contender for a top uh, offense in the league, this team could be really scary, especially heading into late to the year. Super scary. It's kind of crazy. Yep. Kind of crazy. A lot of firepower. I think I'd beat the Jets <laughs> by myself. You alone? <laughs> yeah. That's all I I've need. seen your film. Uh, no, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's kind of there. That's kind of there. Yeah. Um, but of course, I mean, I think last year the Jets, they, they were just a quarterback away, right? That, that's yeah. what a lot of people said. And then they added Aaron Rodgers, and they're, obviously they're getting a lot of hype now. Hard Knocks, of course, the TV show for HBO Max. It's going to be central around uh, the New York Jets. I think the first episode's actually already out, maybe two. I don't know. But I think this team has a ton of hype and reasonably so. The only thing I would say why I get a red flag around this team is you look back to two seasons ago, technically, uh, when the Broncos, before they had Russell Wilson, everyone was kind of saying they're just a quarterback away. They got their veteran quarterback with uh, Russell Wilson, and we all know how that ended out. Not too hot going 5-12. and So I think that although this Jets team has all this hype and although they are looking very, very scary, and I think that most likely they will live up to that hype, at least around there, I think there is a decent Decent chance that a lot of that, that a lot of people aren't talking about that this team could end up as more of a a bust caliber team with uh, similar to the Broncos last year. Yeah, I agree. Um, and here's the other thing: is it's Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, exactly. it might take more than a year. You know, what I mean, the Broncos might come out looking like a completely different team this year and mm-hmm. go twelve and five. You know what I mean? So um, I wouldn't expect them to go. You know, win a Super Bowl first year together just because it takes time to build that chemistry and stuff. But uh, yeah, they definitely have the right. You know, they're moving in the right direction for for sure. Yeah, I would say the same thing. I mean, the Jets, like you said, they kind of came out of nowhere. Maybe two, three years ago, they yeah. weren't really anything. Maybe the bottom of their division, but they do have good receivers. We know they have a good defense, and now with Aaron Rodgers, I would say he's better than Russell Wilson all time. Oh yeah. yeah so sure. you could say that for for um the Broncos too. Like maybe Russell Wilson because he had that spark. For where did he play for before? Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he definitely had better pieces in Seattle, so I think that might be some reasoning for why he's not so effective on the Broncos, but I would say the Jets are a team to look out for this year. For sure. All right, but but by the way, Dalvin Cook signed the one, a one-year deal uh, worth up to $8.6 million. Now, of course, running back contracts have been their own separate story this offseason. You got a bunch of uh, drama in the news with Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs and the whole problem with holding out with the running backs. And I think if you look at that just side of the uh, NFL for a second, uh, so since that is a very, very highly talked about uh, topic, I think, yes, you have to, uh, running back should be paid. And it's one of the hardest positions to play in football. I mean, you're getting beat up play yeah. after play. And I think that's the reason why their shelf life is so low. But I think with that, you look on the NFL GM and NFL coach side of things, you don't really have a reason to give them a long-term deal. And that's where all these problems root is the GM is saying, we'd almost be better drafting a new running back who is most likely going to be better uh, even if you have more experience, because again, running backs just it, some of it is experience, but sadly, a lot of it is just athleticism and age. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll go draft another one, pay him a rookie deal, which is so much cheaper. So, considering the regular running back 
contract right now. 8.6 million is not a bad deal. I think Dalvin Cook just really wanted to get on the team because if you hold out or if you ask for a bigger contract, then you might not see the field again. So it's very dangerous game playing on that. But uh, we're going to look over to another running back signing uh, just about two days ago now, or I guess it was yesterday around that noon time. The New England Patriots went ahead and welcome in Ezekiel Elliott to the team. Of similar to Dalvin Cook, this is the first time Zeke's going to be on any other NFL team. Of course, he was drafted by the Cowboys, uh, lit up the league as soon as he entered it. Had a phenomenal rookie year, phenomenal sophomore year. But you just look, I, I saw an Instagram post earlier today of just his downward progression throughout his career and this the yards per game. I think it started off like 100 yards a game. He had like over... I think it was 1,600 yards that first season, and then since then it just went down, down, down. So, yes, it's not a horrible sign for the Patriots. It's going to give them uh, definitely uh, uh, some firepower over there. Personally, I drafted Saquon Barkley in my family fantasy league when we drafted super early. It was like late June um, that we drafted just because that's the time we meet up uh, for our vacation. So it, it was a risky pick back then, but I'm happy with it. And, of course, he's definitely going to make uh, an, a, an addition to that uh, New England Patriots offense. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know if this is the greatest signing of all time, but I do think his name means a lot more than his actual yeah. play style, as funny as that sounds. Yeah. Um, um, if you had a running back who was a little bit lesser known uh, but and did the same exact things, he might not draw as much attention from the defense as, you know, mm-hmm. as, as anyone else would. But, uh, yeah, I think his name means a lot more than his actual uh, stats and, and abilities. I agree. Yeah. I would say maybe he could even play like a decoy on offense because we know yeah. some of those veteran players, even for the NBA or, or almost any sport, once you sign a veteran, you know what they can do, you know what they're capable of, but once they get older, they lose some of that skill. Yeah. So I feel like that that's something that the Patriots are thinking with this uh, signing. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with that. And, and I think, yes, there is a lot of name value there with uh, yeah. Zeke. And yeah, he's definitely to that age, but he's still a great running back. I mean, he, his power is there and we've seen him like perform at the top of his power. So mm-hmm. I think it's a great signing. The Patriots, of course, they do have um, Ramondre Stevenson. That's his name. He's already there. He, yep. He's a, a younger running back and he was definitely looked on as like a fantasy outbreak, which we'll actually talk about later. Uh, for the fantasy side of things, but he was definitely looked at as a guy who could step up this year. Not sure if that hype is much around anymore now that he's going to be more of a uh, going to be splitting the carries between Zeke and him and his red zone carries, considering Zeke is definitely a red zone back, a bigger guy that could go down as well. But I think, you know, the, with that side of things, it's similar to the Jets signing and the fact that they already had a running back, a young running back. So I think it's kind of interesting that they would do that. But uh, the Patriots, they have the toughest uh, schedule, strength of schedule in the league. So I think they're definitely more of a mentality that uh, we want to at least add a couple firepower so we don't look horrible. Uh, and of course, in that AFC East with the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Bills, that's, in my opinion, the hardest division in football. I mean, yeah. so much firepower among that uh, division. Uh, so I think it wasn't a bad signing, especially for now. It was only one year, uh, similar to Dalvin Cook, which I think was the smart move because I don't know if they're really yeah. looking to the long term with an mm-hmm. older veteran back like Z, who, who has definitely been worn down over the years. Well, that's where I think, you know, what'd you say there? Uh, you know, Andre Stevenson. Yeah, I think that's where you look for him to have a big season. Yeah. You know what I mean? And almost maybe like a mentorship. Yeah, type thing. yeah. seriously, because now everyone's looking at Zeke. And now he, like you said, he's kind of a decoy. And now, you know, Stevenson can go <laughs> bust out a pretty good little yep. year just because everybody's, you know, less worried about him. You know, he's, he's nobody, com- you know, compared to Zeke. So. And you could say that for Tony Pollard on the Cowboys, oh, too, yeah. Yeah. because obviously yeah. Ezekiel Elliott was on the Cowboys maybe like three days ago. So you could see that that mentorship was there. And now that um, Tony Pollard has his outbreak season or he's expected to, you could say maybe that's why they decided to dump him off. For sure. For sure. Yeah, but of course, I was just mentioning there, uh, we're going to be looking more on the fantasy side of things. In fact, we have a Ween League getting started up. It's in the process. We're trying to get uh, that league full. So the next episode or two, you can maybe be expecting us just kind of talking about that league. We'll be having our draft here shortly. But of course, before that, I do want to look on this fantasy uh, football. Of course, this is really the time you're seeing a lot of leagues draft and you're seeing all this crazy news about pretty much every single detail, every single signing. People blow it out of proportion, but that's just fantasy football. That's part of the fun. Um, but 
I want to look more on just some of the guys that you guys are liking in that fantasy. You know, maybe maybe some of the guys that you're not liking that you're seeing go high um, and really just preview our draft and say, I mean, you don't want to spoil much, right? You don't want to give away a strategy, but uh, maybe just look a bit on that. Personally, I'm going to start off here with a guy that I'm not drafting really at all, and I don't understand at all why he's getting all this hype, and that is rookie Bijan Robinson of the Falcons. Uh, If you don't know, uh, Robinson was the eighth pick, I do believe, uh, went to the Falcons very high for running back, and you're going to get his value. He's a great running back, but to see him going in the first round in the top 10, I think right now he's averaging about running back three or four uh, off the board. So I I think for a guy that you haven't even seen play yet is a bit of a reach. (laughs) And on top of that, um, well, you haven't seen in the play in the NFL. And on top of that, he's going to be splitting carries. If you remember that Atlanta backfield, you got Cordell Patterson, a veteran guy, a bigger back. And then on top of that, Tyler Alger, who is also a younger guy. I think he was just a rookie, if not last year, a couple of years ago. So they're going to be still getting production back there. So I think just drafting this guy so early in a running back committee type of system and you've never seen play in the NFL. I think that's a bit of a reach. And yeah. I've done plenty of mock drafts. <laughs> Uh, when I worked over the summer, pretty much every single time I had a 15, I'd do a mock draft. And I not in a single one, I was drafting Bijan Robinson. I'm staying yeah. away from him because there's still plenty of bust value there, and I'm, I'm not even taking that risk. Yeah. Mine's going to be the uh, Bengals defense. Um, obviously very good. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? Maybe one of the better, but I, I uh, no. Staying away I, from it? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I think there's so many teams that are well, some just are, eagle. I mean, anyone. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Just. Um, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're terrible, but definitely not, you know, who I'm going to. And something I want to add for like defense and fantasy, because it's such an interesting concept because it, it, it's important. Like a good defense can rack you points. If you remember 2018, well, it was the 2017, 2018 Mm -hmm. season, the uh, new England Patriots were averaging like 17 points a game on defense, which is absurd. They were averaging like a (laughs) touchdown a week. Yeah. Um, so it's very important, but I think what, I try to do in my strategy is I don't even draft a defense and week by week, I'm going to look who that defense is playing and I'm just going to see who's facing a bad offense. Don't want to call any of you guys out, but yeah. if someone's facing the Colts, I'm picking up whoever's facing the Colts. Cause yeah. I think, you know, I, I'd rather have a defense that might Come not be the best, might, <laughs> <Colts> are- <laughs> might not be the best, but is facing a bad team rather than a very good defense that's yeah. facing a very good offense. Cause not we've seen idea. like top tier defenses, every year get blown out by top tier offenses. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, that's what I try to do. So I I get what you're saying with the uh, Bengals and I think they're, they are going decently high on the defense, but they just lost Jesse Bates, their Mm -hmm. safety over the off season. And overall, I mean, they're going to have a tough schedule. Uh, I think they're surely going to be scheduled to face several of those high power AFC teams, which are just so many of. So Mm -hmm. and Dawson for uh, your like bust pick, you had Bijan and I personally would go with Jonathan Taylor. I know Ooh, I like you that. guys are all Colts fans and stuff, but I don't know. I'm not. He's not. He's not very much predicted to uh, play this season. So on rankings, he's going number six, maybe running back two, three behind Austin Eckler and Christian McCaffrey. But I just don't see why he would go that high if he's not guaranteed to play. I did see something that he was expected to come back to training camp, which is definitely a move in the right direction. Uh, I think it was just about two weeks ago or maybe three weeks ago where it, where the all, all the news broke of Jonathan Taylor uh, with Jim Irsay and um, how he was wanted a trade and he, or he wanted a contract. Again, you go back, I was talking about earlier, all this running back contract uh, stuff and Jonathan Taylor was in a similar boat where he was saying, I want a bigger contract or I ain't, I ain't playing for you guys. And, uh, Jim Ursa came out on the press and he was just, we don't need this guy. You know, it, 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 if we have him, if we don't, they will move on, which is definitely not uh, the thing you should say when you're trying to get. Didn't he say like, if he died, the Colts wouldn't even matter? Or yeah, whatever. no, it was like, it was somewhere. It was like, he was like, if we sign Jonathan Taylor, if we don't, no one's going to die and we'll move on, which <laughs> is true. But yeah. like when you're trying to sign your franchise running back, you don't really want to say it doesn't matter. I don't know if any, um, of you guys have Braden on social media. Or <laughs> oh not. boy. But uh, Braden did sound off on old Jim Ursa the other day. <laughs> on his story, he, uh, I, I'm not joking. I had tears in my eyes reading it. It was so funny. Uh, but yeah, so I think we all know how Braden feels on this yeah. side, you know, where he's at. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but it was hilarious. It I was think like, I know what you're talking about. He really, he really teed off on me. <laughs> I mean, not a big paragraph or anything, but 
It's like de- seven words. Yeah, about it's, it's seven, enough. It, it's about seven one enough. sentence. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it uh, definitely uh, let everybody know where Braden stood. And um, I'm focusing more on Jonathan Taylor again, as I was mentioning, he he he'll uh, he, he's expected to come back this week in training camp. He was on the PUP, which is uh, who something unable to perform, yep. and that it's kind of like the it's kind of the um, I guess you could say the ch- not cheater way, but kind of the. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's, it's the way, way you can kind of just like slip under because yeah. if yes. you are on contract and if you miss training camp, you're getting fined. Mm-hmm. Like the NFL is obviously very serious about mm-hmm. this stuff, but um, you can go on this like you're not able to perform even though you're not really injured, and yeah. it's kind of like a loophole. That's yeah. what was the word I was yeah. looking for. But anyways, Aiden, I do kind of agree. Um, on my other school league, I did draft Jonathan Taylor just because yeah. he was there pretty late in the second round, and I was willing to take that chance because. Yeah. Man, uh, two two years ago, not last year, year before, oh he gosh. was crazy. I mean, he lightened up every fantasy league, blew ev- every other running back out of the water. Um, of course, last year there was some injuries and leg injuries with the running backs. They, they could and be a risky route. O line was yeah. That that's, that's another game, thing, yeah. and I think it is going to be better this year. I agree. So I, I, agree. I think there is that, and there are some there's some upside with Jonathan Taylor, but I think that's definitely not a reason to avoid him yeah. i still think there are plenty of red flags for jonathan taylor but Braden, you want to give us a player that maybe you're you're staying away from uh, um, fantasy? i was getting right check the fantasy league that i'm already in yeah but uh <laughs> if i had to go one off my top top of my head probably like keenan allen or something like that yeah i like that yeah he, yeah he did really good like two or three years ago then he gets drafted in the first round usually in the leagues that i'm in but i've never seen really great production out of him yeah, and you look at Keenan Allen, of course, for the Chargers over there in Los Angeles. They have a great quarterback with Justin Herbert, that franchise quarterback. He just signed his long-term deal in, in this past month, late July as well. So I think that's not really a concern, but I see what you mean, especially if you're a guy that uh, factors in age a lot in fantasy, which is not a horrible thing to do. In fact, it's pretty smart. Uh, there's uh, Keenan Allen has plenty of reasons to stay away, and on top of that, you look back to last year, I mean, there's, all many, there's, so, uh, there's so many touchdowns that can go around and uh, Los Angeles and with Austin Eckler there with Mike Williams there and they just added Quentin Johnson in the draft there's just not not there's so many offensive weapons it's almost like the 49ers and the fact that like it's risky to draft any of these guys even though they're such talented players just because of the the other players around the team that are just as talented so that uh, I could very much understand why you're avoiding him and also another guy that I am avoiding and uh, heading into this uh, fantasy season, I guess you could say, I, I wasn't. In fact, I loved him, but recently I've kind of strayed away, and that is Austin Eckler, the yep. running back for the Chargers. I know that seems a bit crazy, but um, but if you look back to last year, he was running back number one. Mm-hmm. He, I think it was some crazy stat. He got like 80% of the red zone target, like not the targets, but all the plays. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like whether it was running the ball, passing the ball, 80% of the plays went to him. But... um. My, Mike Williams and uh, or Keenan Allen were both out a good a, fa- a good majority of the year last year with injuries. Of course, there there are also both of those guys are kind of getting to that age. So that that's a reason that Austin Eckler is kind of a red flag to me. Is same as same as Keenan Allen in the sense that there's so many people around the ball that I just don't know how much production he's going to get this year. Now, don't get me wrong. If it's the late, if it's even like the middle to the late of the first round and he's still there, I'm picking him, but I'm seeing him go through uh, pick number three, yep. pick number four. Yeah. And if I have the fourth pick, I might take Tyree kill over him. I might take Travis Kelsey over him. One yeah. of those other guys that I know is going to be lighten uh, 100% lighten up the league. So that, that, that's uh, someone that I'm looking out for, but I want to more focus on now a team, a player that you're, really high on a player that you really like in the league. I'll talk about mine. You guys can look around for a player, think that a guy that you're trying to pick up. And personally, uh, in a lot of my mock drafts, if if I have the four pick, as I was just mentioning, I love Tyreek Hill at this position. Tyreek Hill has been one of those guys that's been going up and down uh, the charts that I, at least I've seen pretty much throughout the entire year. And there's, yes, there's some red flags with his age and he has to split a uh, reception with Jalen Waddle, who's another crazy yep. good guy, a crazy good wide receiver along him but I think I mean man you got two and he was crazy good last year he's insanely fast I mean I don't know if y'all have seen like the comparisons oh, yeah. of like him and AI kind of generated with like Usain Bolt mm-hmm. obviously it's no no race Usain Bolt bowls him out of the water but the fact that he's even close yeah. is insane like like if it was like a professional Olympic race I think he'd finish like top half or maybe even yeah. up there in the consideration of a podium finish 
And that's just how fast he is. He's definitely like an Olympic sprinter type level. Yeah. And I love him as a player. I mean, of course, he's got so much swagger around him. And there was some, uh, I think there was some worry about the offseason, whether it was injury or whether it was like he got in a fight in a training camp or something. Mm-hmm. Either way, there was something around that kind of made me pull back a bit, but I still love him and I'm drafting him pretty high a lot of the times. Another player I'm really high on, I don't know if this is a bit of my bias here, but uh, I'm a proud supporter of the uh, the Camara still has value, even though he's suspended for three games organization. I've seen several posts on TikTok about Camara stills value. In fact, it's almost like its own phrase going around. And yeah, he's suspended for the first three games and that's definitely a red flag. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're guaranteed to get zero points out of him, but... I love the way he played in the preseason game. He can still play in preseason games, even though he's suspended for the regular season. But he he definitely looked like the 2017, 2018, well, he was drafted 2017, 2017, 2018, 2019 Camara, mm-hmm. where he's getting a bunch of screens. He's getting a bunch of dump offs, check downs, because if you look at just his stats, so much of him was Drew Brees. I hate yeah, to say yeah, it, but he no, was almost like sure. a Drew Brees disciple type mm-hmm. thing where he he made him. He was the uh, Drew Brees. If Drew Brees wasn't a thing, Alvin Kamara wouldn't be a thing. And <laughs> Uh, Dennis Allen, the head coach for the Saints, uh, he's definitely trying to go back to that with Derek Carr and the fact that he wants him to check down to Alvin Kamara because Kamara is so good after the catch and so good at catching the ball on top yeah. of that. And uh, I forget the stat, but if you don't count last year, of course, I think Kamara has been a top five running back every single year he's been in the league except for last year where he was still in the teens uh, mm-hmm. for running backs. A leader so I, I i still love him and of course so much of the league is the first three weeks you know it could it well the th- first three weeks go by very fast and there's still so many other games to go so i'm still drafting him and the where the where he's going i mean he's going i think seventh eighth round uh, and yeah i mean there might be some reasons behind that but yeah. I, I love him and i'm drafting him around that seven eight round range because i don't think there's any reason to draft him higher yeah i also might have some bias as an eagles fan but there's not many fantasy tight ends that you can pick, at least not very high ones. But I think Dallas Goddard could have a good yeah, season. I agree. Because yeah. as an Eagles fan, I mean, watching the games, he is very consistent. He gets a lot of touches, especially with the offense being how it is with, you know, Jalen Hurts as their quarterback. Just got a new running back in DeAndre Swift, A.J. Brown. I mean, everybody, that offense is stacked. And he still gets touches. He's very he's very efficient in the end zone, too. He does get a lot of um, passes thrown to him near the end zone. So I think... He could have a good season and maybe even finish above somebody like, you know, the tight end for the Vikings. I forget. TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm a Colts fan, but, you know, obviously we don't have too much, too much firepower. But uh, uh, I think I'm going to have to go with Justin Jefferson. Um, I think, I mean, honestly, he's like not their only good player, but, you know, he's a, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's a big part of their team, you know. Um, I love Kirk Cousins. Um, I think he's one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league. Like, I mean, he's. I just saw a stat, and it was like looking at um, Kirk Cousins and like, gosh, not Dan Marino. It was Joe Montana, maybe. It was someone like an all time great. Like, yeah, as an all time great. Yeah, and it was like, it wasn't um, all Kirk Cousins, but like, it was maybe fifty fifty. Like, yeah. you know, maybe Montana. I don't know. I mean, I think Kirk Cousins is just like the king of yeah. consistency. That's what I mean. Exactly. He's like, never he's, had any yeah, season exactly. where it's like, oh my gosh, this guy is a freaking stud. Yeah. But it's like. At the same time, he's never had a bad season. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he has, but you know. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, with a good quarterback, I, do they have any other high-level wide receivers? I mean, I, they just drafted uh, Jordan Addison out of UC, okay. USC. And he's a rookie, yeah, but they yeah. lost Adam Thielen. Last yeah, year they had Thielen, I mean. and they dropped him. And I yeah. see what you mean with Justin Jefferson, and I love him as well, even yeah. more than I loved him last year. Mm-hmm. I had him on my fantasy team is because almost every year there's at least one red flag with yeah. even the number one guy. Yeah. I just don't see that with Justin Jefferson. Mm-hmm. I don't see a single reason you should even consider someone else at that yeah. 101 pick, uh, and I completely agree. I think he's going to be a stud, yeah. even better than last year. I that's think. that's where I'm at. Um you know, with losing, losing Thielen and stuff. Yeah. I think even last year he was, you know, I think. I mean, he was the best wide receiver that's in the what I mean. by a landslide. And that's probably, you know, I don't know for sure. I don't keep up on Vikings, you know, media very much. But yeah. if I had to guess, that'd be a fairly large reason why Thielen left. You know what I mean? I mean, Just, I think so, you, yeah. You go from contract. being, you know, he's been the best kid on their team mm-hmm. for a long time. And now, and now you got this, you know, young buck. So it's like, yeah. I don't know. I just, 
I don't see them getting the ball to too many other people other than him. You know yeah. what I mean? So, ready so. for this one? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Let's, all right. Let's hear it. Buffalo Bills. All right. Okay. Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Tyler freaking Bass. The kicker? The kicker, baby. Hey, he puts kicker, up consistent man. Kickers matter. Kickers' points. lives matter. I mean, come on now. We can't be we can't be counting them out. Consistent if you're gonna bring up points. a kicker kicker, it's not Tyler Bass. It is Tyler Bass. <laughs> I mean, Justin Tucker. That's true. That's true. Um, Justin, Justin Tucker, who's that? Oh my I'm joking, I know who it is, but like well, who's that? Yeah, I know you know who it is. Hey, but I, I I like it. I, I've been I picking him up. I, I mean, don't. I think Boo. kickers kickers have a kickers have a huge role in I agree. fantasy. I agree. I think they're they're slept on a lot. I wouldn't be mad. I mean, I think kickers are like known to be like the last pick, and I think if you're please, taking, if you're taking a please kicker, please use anywhere, your first pick to yeah, go fourth round, baby. I can't wait till I play. See, you I don't like, know about that. Now you're getting me in the fourth round. round. <laughs> yeah, this you're guy. not even taking Justin Tucker. You're taking ridiculous. Tyler Bass. I picked Tyler Bass in the fourth round. I'm uh, interesting, league. interesting. Oh One gosh. thing I want to add before we get finished up, Jackson. Well, yes. back to Justin Jefferson. Yes. One thing I wanted to add this is kind of off topic here, but about the Madden cover, right? We know oh, it's yeah. Josh Allen. I don't know what they were thinking not putting Justin Jefferson on that Madden yes. cover. Yes. I mean, again, he was the top wide receiver last year. He he made the gritty. Yeah. I mean, the gritty blew yeah. up everywhere. <laughs> it's literally in Fortnite. I mean, that's like, yeah. <laughs> you're like, come on. Like, <laughs> like that is just like productive, yeah. like uh, media, like, you know, media yeah. frenzy right in front of you. And you go with Josh Allen. I mean, I love Josh Allen. Don't get me wa- wrong. Mm-hmm. I love his tweets, mm-hmm. but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, that that's the thing. But, with that being said, that is going to do it for our first episode here today. One quick thing I forgot to mention at the beginning. Uh, we're going to be doing the podcast format a bit different this year. Of course, last year was really just the four of us, uh, Ryan, Aiden, um, Lucas, who graduated, and I. But for this year, our sports staff is growing much larger. So we're going to be having two groups for the podcast, this first group with us four here, and then a second group, which will be posting Every other week, they'll be going back and forth. So you can expect us every other week and then the other group every other week as well. But again, uh, we hope you all enjoyed this first episode for Aiden Wilson, Jackson Todd, and um, Brayden. I am Dawson Peril. Hope you enjoyed. You're listening to the Arabian Sports Talk 91.7 WEEM.